Okay, so I was asked to make an infinite runner tutorial. This is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do because up to this point all my videos have been in a 2D environment. This one is going to be in a 3D environment. Without getting into a big explanation why, the 3D is actually easier for this type of game when you have objects approaching the screen. Uh, there's so much you'd have to manually do in the 2D environment that is automatically handled because of depth of perception, because of the, of the 3D camera, as opposed to the 2D camera, which really ignores depth. So, uh, I've done nothing so far. This is what happens when you create a new 3D project. It has a camera. When you click on the camera, you can see the preview at the bottom, and it has a directional light. Now, before we get started, I just want to mention that um, whenever you're making a new game, you typically don't use high-end graphics. When you're making a new game, you're basically using placeholder graphics for the purposes of creating a um, proof of concept. You're creating something that simply works and you decide whether or not it's worth um, um, investing and in making you know, the, the high-end graphics and that kind of thing. So uh, please don't get discouraged when you see the primitive objects that I use. It's just meant to demonstrate how to make this work. Um, likewise, there are things that are going to have to be optimized and changed. Uh, but again, you make the game work and then you optimize the code. So, for instance, you're going to see this hierarchy is going to become incredibly cluttered. And there's a way around that, but again, I don't want to jump into that at the very beginning. So, yes, there are things that... Um, would need to be addressed as far as the graphics, we're only using placeholder graphics, and that there are things that would need to be done to optimize the uh, performance. So having said that, let's get into it. So we're going to click on Game Object, and we're going to cl click on 3D Object, and we're going to choose Cube. Games like this tend to have three lanes, so a left, middle, and a right lane, and then there's borders. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, three cubes for the lanes and then two more cubes one on the other side for the borders whether it be the walls or the pillars or the signposts or uh, telephone poles whatever that's bordering it so this first cube we're actually gonna rename we're gonna call this cube M because it's gonna be the middle cube so copy paste and we'll call this one cube L because it's going to be on the left side. So take that red arrow, so the X axis, and slide that over. And we're going to use nice even numbers. We're going to make that negative 1. So it's being moved over by 1. Take that middle cube again, copy, paste. We'll call this cube R. I'm going to slide that over. And it too will be slid over by just one. So we'll make that a positive one. And then we add two more. These, these we're just going to call Q. We don't have to worry about naming them because they're just the border. This one also goes over by another one, so we're up to negative two. And this one is going to go over to positive two. Now, as I mentioned, there's usually some kind of border. Uh, a wall, uh, a pole, whatever you want over there. So let's go to Game Object, 3D Object, and we'll choose Cylinder. Now even as a column, that's a little bit large. It's going to kind of block the screen. So there's a couple things that we want to do. First, let's slide that up. We'll slide it over so it too is at negative 2. So again, you can start to see why it's so important to have uh, a, a spacing system uh, that is easy to calculate. Because we knew exactly where that should go. Let's change its scale. So let's change the Z to say 0.5 
and let's change the X to 0.5 and let's make it taller so let's make this 3 and we'll slide that up let's copy that paste it put it on the other side Oops. again because of the easy numbering we can tell exactly where it should go now let's click on the camera to see how that looks so that's good so the poles go off the top but you can see that this is really probably too high so the camera needs to go up so this is more beneath the camera so let's do that now let's just slide that camera up by grabbing that y-axis and you can see it adjusting on the screen now let's also tilt it so you can grab the rotation tool and there's like a red line coming along the front a red arc you can tilt it and you can see now the camera's kind of looking down so let's leave that for now until we start to move it and then when we move it we can tell if that's right or not so you can only do just so much at this point so now this the two cylinders and the five blocks we're just gonna copy and paste this over and over and over again now we really probably don't want cylinders for uh, every block so we got a couple things we can do we can either add a second uh, horizontal line of blocks without a cylinder or we can simply double the size of these blocks let's just go ahead and double the size of the block so click on the five blocks and let's change its let's see is it the Z we want to change yes so if we highlight all these now all right so we have a Z position of zero this is too deep now because it was one unit now it's two units so really all we should have to do is move this in increments of two so let's copy paste move it out we'll just immediately type that in two and it looks like it's lined up pretty good so paste bump that out to four paste bump that out to six so you really can see now why that um, why having a um, um, have this set up so is that it, it uses predictable uh, easily calculated math as far as placement you're not sitting here with a calculator trying to figure out where everything goes you're just increasing it by an, uh, a simple number so let's scroll out that's just using the scroll wheel and now you can start to see what I was talking about how this gets really cluttered there's a way around this um, but I'm not going to get into it yet so just you know if it bugs you that it's really that cluttered don't worry there is a way around it but again we're trying to just get the basics into place here and we'll add one more so everyone just moved out and even two now there is an issue with the shadows as you can see the top is evident uh, it's evident that it terminates so you either need to make these poles higher or if you're fine with the way that looks you can just leave it as that so now let's actually start moving the camera and then that'll be the end of this lesson so this was the basic construction of the environment obviously this is rather simplistic we don't have any pitfall, pitfalls or anything this is just the overall environment as opposed to the obstacles so now let's start moving the camera so add component physics rigid body get rid of gravity now as I just said that's known as a component just as the camera is a component transformer is a component there's a statement that lets you modify components so right click down here choose create C shop script and we'll call this move cam click on the camera 
drag and drop that. Open it up. And we only need one line to begin with. You can zoom in, hold and control, and then uh, the scroll button, the scroll wheel on the mouse. So in the start section, because we want the camera to move as soon as this begins, we'll do get component, which component? The one we just added, so rigid body. What aspect of it? Velocity. And it's a vector 3. We don't want it to move horizontally on the x-axis. We don't want to move it vertically on the y-axis. We just want it to move along the z-axis, so depth. And in case you are uncertain which direction you're moving in, if you click on the camera, you can see it has a z of, of negative 10. Click on anything in front of it, and you can see it's a z of a greater number, so it's a positive increase. Now that, I believe, should do it. That should get our camera moving for us. And there you go. It's, it's preliminary, but you've got the beginning of an infinite running game now. Uh, got a lot of work to do. As I said, we need to add uh, obstacles, um, and you don't actually see your player character yet. So a lot of work to do, but that is the uh, basics of it as far as uh, creating your environment and moving your camera. If you want, um, you could move the camera towards here so you don't have to create, uh, you know, you don't have to bring out the, um, we don't have to add more of the environment towards the camera. We can just move the camera. There you go. Okay, that's it for this one.